Tokyo Electric Power Company says a faulty thermometer is likely to blame for the rising temperature at the disabled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. One of the thermometers inside the number two reactor started to show high readings late last month. The temperature exceeded 80 degrees Celsius, the critical level, on Sunday. It rose to 94.9 degrees at noon on Monday. The utility says it thinks the thermometer is broken. Two other instruments in the reactor showed that the temperature dropped to about 33 degrees. A cable inside the thermometer is probably cut, resulting in a false reading. But since the actual temperature is below 80 degrees, we think the conditions are OK. TEPCO has received billions in public funds since the March 11 disaster. Now the government is demanding more say in how TEPCO runs its business. Industry Minister Yukio Edano has issued a warning to TEPCO saying the owner of the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant will not receive public money unless the government gets adequate voting rights in return. Edano told TEPCO President Toshio Nishizawa on Monday that the government will not otherwise accept the business revival plan the utility will be drawing up by the end of March. TEPCO needs a large amount of public funds for compensation for nuclear disaster victims and for thermal power generation. As long as I am in charge, we will not accept any request for a capital injection unless we get sufficient voting rights that reflect our amount of investment. A document submitted to the government two weeks after the Fukushima nuclear accident suggested that the Tokyo metropolitan area might have to be evacuated. But the government failed to acknowledge the existence of the document until the end of last year. The Atomic Energy Commission report was compiled at the request of Naoto Kan, the Prime Minister at the time. The Commission's chief, Shunsuke Kondo, said the document explains possible contingencies following the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident as well as preventive measures. The report said massive amounts of radioactive materials could be dispersed from the plant if containment vessels were damaged or used fuel was exposed to the air if water injection failed. It said under such a scenario, residents would have to be evacuated from an area within 170 kilometers of the plant and within 250 kilometers on a voluntary basis. This would include the Tokyo metropolitan area. The report recommended that various methods for cooling down the reactors should be used to avoid this serious situation. Khan told NHK last September that his government had made a simulation based on the worst case scenario. But the report was not treated as an official document until it was discovered in the Commission's office at the end of last year. A Japanese civic group investigating the Fukushima nuclear accident is looking into the reasons why the document was not made public. The Japanese government has decided to review donation practices at power companies. Utilities donate money to projects where their plants are located. They then pass on the expense to consumers. But utilities are not obliged to disclose how much or to whom they donate. NHK asked officials in 44 prefectures and municipalities how they felt about the issue. Local governments have received $2.1 billion from 12 nuclear plant operators and two related agencies since the construction of nuclear plants began in the late 1960s. Local authorities can decide how to spend donated funds. They've invested the money into public works projects and events to promote local economies. In some cases, local governments actively solicited donations from the operators of nuclear plants in their areas. In 2009, Shizuoka Prefecture asked Chubu Electric Power Company for money to build a road in a city that hosts a nuclear plant. Something about nuclear power plants makes people think not in my backyard. So municipalities hosting plants should be rewarded in ways that are institutionalized. Shizuoka has never let rewards affect its nuclear safety standards. A specialist in corporate finance told NHK that including donations in utility charges is undesirable. Motomoto 
The cost should not have been passed on to electricity users in the first place. The central government must make the firms disclose the flow of money. A panel of experts with the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry has been reviewing the way power companies charge consumers. Panel members said in a recent report that donations should not be included in user fees. The ministry hopes to decide on the report by the end of March. Japanese scientists say earthworms are offering an insight into radioactivity around Fukushima Daiichi. They found high levels of cesium in creatures up to 130 kilometers from the nuclear plant. Researchers from the Forestry and Forest Products Research Institute measured cesium in worms at three locations. A sample from Kawauchi village, 30 kilometers from the plant, showed about 19,000 becquerels of cesium per kilogram of worms. In Otama village, 70 kilometers from the plant, the worms contained 1,000 becquerels per kilogram. The third sample from Tadami town, 130 kilometers away, contained about 290 becquerels. The researchers say the worms eat decomposed leaves that are contaminated with cesium. They say there is a danger of the radioactivity moving up the food chain. I'm concerned that earthworms with high levels of cesium will have an impact on forest animals. He says researchers will need to monitor the creatures that feed on worms, including birds and wild boars. A popular Hong Kong actor will star in a TV program to promote tourism in Japan's tsunami hit Tohoku region. Eric Tsang is on an eight-day visit to Miyagi and Iwate prefectures. A documentary about his trip will be broadcast in Hong Kong next month. The Japanese government has earmarked $650,000 for the project. Tsang says he hopes to show that Many sightseeing spots in eastern Japan are safe. Most Japanese municipalities that host the plants are cautious about turning the reactors back on. NHK surveyed leaders in 29 of those municipalities, excluding those in Fukushima Prefecture. 51 of Japan's 54 nuclear reactors are currently out of operation. Municipalities would have to give approval before they are restarted. Five of them, or 17 percent, said they would give the go-ahead for the reactors to resume operation. Leaders in 21 others, or 72 percent, said they wouldn't or said they can't decide. Those that expressed caution said they cannot be sure whether the reactors are really safe. They cited the difficulty of persuading residents while the government has yet to decide on its nuclear policy. NHK asked what's needed besides stress tests to restart the reactors. Nearly half suggested a satisfactory investigation into the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant and the understanding of local residents. More than a third of municipalities cited new government safety regulations. Local leaders said they're concerned about safety and demanded more government accountability. Japan's atomic watchdog is set to clear the way for restarting some of its idled reactors. The Nuclear and, Safety, the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency is preparing to approve tests on two reactors in central Japan. The agency says a panel of experts has agreed to complete its evaluation of computer-simulated stress tests at the OE nuclear plant. The government ordered the tests on suspended reactors last July. Government officials need to win the consent of municipalities hosting the plants. 
Some panel members say the tests were only simulations, and they say such checks should not be used to restart the reactors. The agency decided to end the debate by accepting to take full responsibility for the tests. Members say sufficient safety measures have been taken with regard to earthquakes and tsunami as powerful as those that hit the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Japan's atomic watchdog has endorsed the results of stress tests on two reactors at the Oi nuclear plant in Fukui Prefecture, central Japan. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency says the tests on the number three and number four reactors were conducted appropriately. It says there are adequate measures in place to deal with earthquakes and tsunamis. The report is the first by the agency about stress tests on Japan's suspended reactors. 51 of the country's 54 reactors are now offline. The agency plans to submit its report to Japan's Nuclear Safety Commission as early as Monday after briefing industry minister Yukio Edano. The commission will review the report and consult with nuclear experts. The government will then make the final decision on whether to approve restarting the reactors. But local governments also need to give consent before any reactors can resume operating. The governments of both Fukui Prefecture and Oi Town have urged the central government to create new safety standards based on last year's nuclear accident. An NHK poll shows that just over 20 percent of Japanese citizens support the restarting of halted nuclear reactors. Fifty-one of the country's 54 reactors have been idle since the March 11th disaster. Most were taken offline for regular inspections. NHK conducted the nationwide survey over the weekend. More than 1,000 people responded to the telephone poll. Results show that 22 percent support resumption of the reactors. 36 percent were opposed. Another 36 percent were undecided. The idle reactors are required to pass stress tests before they can be restarted. The government-approved checks are bent to confirm that plants can safely withstand extreme events, but approvals for resumptions is also needed from local governments.